Hey guys, Frosty Knives here, back with another video. And a little while ago, sometime last year, I did a Stephen King video um, that I called The Good, The Bad, and The Meh, uh, where I talked about my three favorite Stephen King novels, uh, my three least favorite Stephen King novels, uh, and three Stephen King novels that I read that I didn't really have an opinion on. They were sort of in the middle, and I wanted to reread them again to see if my opinion had changed. Uh, and I liked doing that video, so I thought I would do it again, uh, only this time I would do it uh, about horror authors. So, here we are. Uh, this is my uh, The Good, The Bad, and The Meh Horror Edition, Horror Author Edition, uh, where I will give you three of my favorite horror authors, three of my least favorite horror authors, I hate, I, I don't like using the word hate, it's too strong. Um, and three authors that I would like to delve deeper into. So, uh, let's start with The Good. Um, and right off the top of the bat, you know, uh, if you've watched my videos um, for any length of time, you know that my favorite horror author is Stephen King. So, we're, we're just going to shunt him to the side because that's a given. We know that he's going to be at the top of the list. We don't need to talk about that. I've made uh, videos reviewing his books and his career ad nauseum, so uh, we already know that. So that leaves us with with two, uh, two other of my favorite horror authors. The second one is interesting um, because this, my second favorite horror author is someone who I believe has is criminally underrated. Never quite got the the the, the stature. Um, you know, the, the spotlight like, like he should have. Um, and that is Robert McCammon. Robert McCammon is my, my second favorite horror author. And thinking back on it, when I was a kid, um, you know, I, w I was literally one book away from having a different favorite horror author. And I think if I had picked up a, a Robert McCammon book before I had picked up a Stephen King book, then my whole channel would be very different. Uh, my whole reading life would be very different because I really believe that he would have been, quickly would have been my favorite author. Um, I have read a, a ton of his work. I have read a lot of his work um, growing up. All of his early stuff, uh, the very first book I read by him was Stinger. Uh, and then you've got things like uh, Bethany Sin, Bale, Nightboat. Swan Song, which I did a review on, which is phenomenal. They Thirst, Usher's Passing, another phenomenal book. Uh, Mine, I did a review on that. Um, I didn't read, haven't read some of his newer stuff, but his early catalog, Wolf's Hour, another great book. Um, I read it, I've loved it. Uh, he's a phenomenal writer. He's never gotten, I think, the spotlight or the respect that he deserves because. He was writing at a time uh, where Stephen King was 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 uh, was big and on the top, and uh, a Stephen King casts a very large shadow, very large shadow over the '80s, and it was hard to get out of that shadow. And I just unfortunately think that he got caught in that shadow, and he got he got out. He 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 did um, he did get a, a a pretty good following, but I don't think you know he never got the. A lot of the movie deals or, or whatnot um, that that King did. So, um, if you've never read McCammon, you should. You just should. Um, so he is my second my second favorite. Third favorite um, is another person who started from the '80s, and he was able to uh, get out of King Shadow, so to speak, uh, uh, during uh, his early times. Um, and that and part of that is due to uh, his phenomenal writing and his books and his own abilities. Uh, but part of that, I actually do believe, is due to King himself. And we'll talk about that. Um, my, my third favorite horror writer is Clive Barker. Clive Barker has written a lot of amazing books and short stories. He's done a lot of, of, of good work. Um, he's very unique, and, and that's what really drew me to Barker. His books of blood, stories, his long novels. He's got a very unique voice, a very unique take on the genre, um, uh, on the horror genre. And at the time, in the 80s, 
it was a lot of sort of like the same type of tropes and the same type of stories. You know, your vampires and your things that go bump in the night and your ghosts and your hauntings and, and whatnot. And he did a lot of that too, but he did it very uniquely. And his ideas were extremely n novel. Uh, hadn't, I'd never read anything like him before. Um, his writing style is, is great. And um, I really uh, got to find him from watching um, Hellraiser. And the reason that I say that uh, King sort of helped him get out of King's own shadow is because I remember being a kid and I remember watching the commercials for the first Hellraiser movie. And at the beginning of every commercial, every time they ran that commercial, they would start it with a quote from Stephen King. And Stephen King said, and I don't know if he really said this. I'm assuming he did because it was plastered all over national television. And so the quote from Stephen King was, I have seen the future of horror, and its name is Clive Barker. And being a King aficionado at the time, reading everything that the man has done, I, I, I heard that and I went, okay, so if, if, if King himself is putting his stamp of approval on this, on this author, on this work, I should, I should look into it. Um, and so I did. So that's why I think, I, that's why I say I think that in addition to Barker's writing, his talent, King himself helped push him out of his own shadow by promoting him so heavily in the 80s as the future of horror. Um, and if you've never read Barker and you're not sure you like it, I challenge you to pick up a copy of Weave World, which was the first novel that I read by him, and read it. It will change your mind. It will change your outlook on the horror genre. It is uh, a wonderfully fantastic horror novel. Um, just, I guess, for full disclosure, uh, Clive Barker tends to fall on the more gritty, brutal, violent, gory, bloody side of horror. So if visceral uh, descriptions of horror... I mean, this is the man who wrote Hellraiser, who wrote... That Hellbound Heart, which was what Hellraiser was uh, based off of. Uh, so if that type of gritty, visceral horror isn't your thing, Barker might not be. But if it is, and you haven't read Barker, then you should. Um, so those are my top three favorite horror writers. Now we're going to go to my top three not-so-favorite horror writers. Again, you know, hate is a bad word, is a, a strong word, and I don't like to use it. Uh, only in very small situations do I like to use that. So we're going to go with my not-so-liked horror authors. And there's there's really two. There's really two, but I had to come up with three for my, my video and for my list. So um, third place or, or so, we'll start with three is actually a tie between um, Richard Lehman Richard Lehman and Bentley Little. I've read a smattering of both over the years, and by smattering, I think I mean one or two of the books, and they just never grabbed me. I don't remember them, so I guess that's an indication of whether I like them or not. I don't remember them, and I'm not really foaming at the mouth and chomping at the bit to read more of Little and Lehman, so... Um, and I needed a third entry, so unfortunately they they made the list, um, and so they're they're number three. Um, I, I also want to say, as we go into these three, that I'm not here. To, I don't want to really step on anybody's toes. So, if I um, mention an author that happens to be your favorite author, and I say I I don't really like them, um, you know that's okay. Right, uh, uh, I'm not here to change anybody's mind. If you like these horror authors, then that's great. The important thing is is that people are reading. That's the important thing. Important thing is is that people are reading, and people are enjoying what they read. And if you're reading and you enjoy what you read, then then I would I would help you. I would encourage you to just keep continue, and keep on going because that's really that's really all reading is about. Uh, you like it, you enjoy it, you get stuff out of it, so um, keep on, keep it on. Uh, so my last two in the in the category of the ones that I don't like or don't really get into, um, I say this, it might rankle a few feathers, or might not. Um, number two uh, is John Saul. 
I, I've read a bunch of Saul over the years, and I, I don't find him scary. I don't find him intriguing. I don't find him interesting. A lot of his books, in my opinion, tend to be a little bit boring on the boring side. Um, there's not a lot of horror. Uh, I, I think maybe he leans more towards thrillers. Um, again, I don't really remember a lot of his stuff, but I know I've read a lot of his stuff. I've read uh, a lot of his early works, and um, I just don't remember liking them enough to the point where I wanted to go out and read his whole catalog. I've picked up a few from the library. I've read them. Technically, I don't believe any of these authors technically is in writing ability. There's anything wrong with them. Uh, it's content, right? It's their content. And I don't really find John Saul's content to be interesting enough for me to keep going and to actively seek out his books. Um, so that's number two. And number one, number one of the, of, of the horror authors that I do not like, uh, that would be Dean Koontz. Um, I personally truly believe, this is just my opinion, but I believe that Koontz is a hack. And he's sort of like the James Patterson of horror authors, where he just keeps churning out book after book after book after book, and they're all technically the same book. Now, I have read a lot of Koontz when I was a kid, and I was going through my King phase, and I read everything that the library had for King. I read his whole work. I needed something else. So who is the next person who has a large volume of novels that I could read? That That's Dean Koontz. He has written a lot, a lot of books. So I transfer once once I finished King, I went to Koontz and I started reading all of his stuff. I have read a lot of Koontz over the years. Uh, under When he was publishing under his name, when he was publishing under Lee Nichols, the, the man has like <clears throat> three or four pseudonyms. Um, I've read uh, Watchers and Lightning and Midnight and Strangers and Whispers and TikTok and uh, the Face of Terror and the Mad, all, all of the stuff. And I'm just trying to remember because he's written a lot and I, I've read a lot of it. <laughs> and I, over, as I kept going through it <clears throat> and the months and the years went on, I just kept reading it. I just realized that it's all the same. It's, he, he's, he's essentially writing <clears throat> novels that are just... Their formula, uh, their rote, their, they're not particularly scary. I, I never once was terrified by a Kuntz novel. Um, and very, very few of them are actually interesting. Where I, where I read it and I go, huh, I, that was a pretty good story. Uh, they're mostly forgettable. Uh, and that's mostly why you see a lot of Dean Kuntz in thrift shops and Goodwills. Uh, because they're beach reads. People go to the beach, they pick up a novel, uh, it's Coots novel, they read it, they go, oh, that's great, while they're sitting on the beach, sipping a margarita. And then they say, I don't need it anymore, and they send it to the Goodwill. Or they send it to a thrift shop, or they, they donate it. And that's why you find a lot of those types of books. That's why you find a lot of Coots books. That's why you find a lot of Patterson books, you know, in Goodwills, because they're beach reads. They're just, you read them, and, you, and they have no, there's not a lot of substance to them. <clears throat> caveat, that's not to say now, uh, I give props where props are due, that's not to say that Kuntz doesn't have anything that is worth reading, because I think that he does, he has a large volume of work, and not all of it is good, most of it isn't, but the first three books that I ever read of his, Watchers, Lightning, and Midnight, those I found interesting, and those I thought were good, and those are the only three books that have stayed with me all these years, that I remember what those books were about. So, if you're going to read Kuntz, I would read those three books, and then you can decide whether or not his style of storytelling is for you. For, for me personally... It's not, and I stopped reading them years ago, and I have no desire to go back. <clears throat> but um, but if you like that, um, or if you're interested in what he writes, I would read those three and just see what you think. Um, so those are my top three nah, nah nays uh, for books. And now top three authors that I want to delve into uh, a little bit more that uh, I've read a smattering of them, I like what I've seen, and I just want to go deeper. Um, 
Number three, and again, these aren't in any particular orders. I just have to put them in a, a, a number order for my own head. Number three is uh, Brian Lumley. I got the Necroscope series sitting right over there. The first five books of the Necroscope series. And I remember reading at least the first one or two when I was a kid. And I remember thinking it was a very unique take on the vampire story. And I remember liking them. And he's written a, a, a bit. And I do have the first five. So I would like to get back into reading his work uh, just to see, you know, if I still like it and just to see what it's all about. Because what I remember of it, I enjoyed. And I thought it was interesting and unique. And I'm always looking for the interesting and unique when it comes to horror. Um, so that's one person I would love to delve into. Number two, James Herbert. James Herbert has been <clears throat> called the British Stephen King. Uh, apparently he's much like King over there. And he has also written a lot uh, of books. Again, <clears throat> I got a lot of Herbert on that shelf back there. You can't see it because they're behind all these books. But I have a lot of Herbert books there. Uh, I have some more over there. And um, I would like to read those. I would like to get more into his works. I've read one, to my knowledge. That was Sepulchre. I don't remember it, but I remember liking it. I have this feeling of that I liked it. So I'd like to read more of his stuff uh, just to see what the rest of his work is about. <clears throat> and then um, the third one um, is going to be is Anne Rice. Now, I've read the token Anne Rice the, the entry point books. I've read uh, Interview with the Vampire, Vampire the Stat, and Queen of the Dam, right? The original sort of trilogy. And I liked it. Um, and I just never read any more of her stuff. And I want to. I would like to get back into reading her world. I want to read about the rest of the vampires. I want to read about the witches. I've never read any of her Mayfair witches books. Um, and I want to get back. She's, she's built a world a universe around these vampires and witches, and they all uh, sort of, co you know, they stand alone, but they also intertwine. And so I would like to read and get involved more in that universe to see uh, to see what it's all about. Um, so there it is. There's uh, my The Good, The Bad, The Meh horror author edition. Three authors I love, three authors I do not love, three authors I would like to read more of. So I would love to know your thoughts and your opinions and what are your three favorites and three not so favorites and three that you would like to read more of. So comment below and tell me what you think, uh, what your favorite, not so favorite authors are uh, and and whatever your, you know, whatever your opinions are uh, of, of any of them. So guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. Uh, as always, give it a, a thumbs up and a, and a like and a subscribe and do what you got to do and spread it around. Tell your friends, tell your enemies, go tell it on the mountain. I'm not going to sing it for you. And as always, I will see you in the next video.